Hello and welcome to Revival Today's International Camp Meeting 2023, What No Eye Has Seen. My name is Chi Chi, I am your online host. If you're a part of RTC Online, you know who I am, you know what this is, but if this is your first time watching, this is our platform for all of you that are viewing at home. If you're watching in your bedroom, if you're watching from your living room couch, maybe you're watching while driving, you shouldn't probably, you should probably pick one of those things to do, but I'm not gonna judge you. Thank you for being here anyway. Like I said, my name is Chi Chi and, and I'm here because of you. We're so grateful that you are able to join us tonight for night six, night seven of our international camp meeting. The time has flown by. It honestly seems feels like Sunday was so far away, but it has been a powerful, life-changing week. Anybody can attest to that tonight? Anybody can say the same. Yes, it's been life-changing. It's been powerful. I have been, I've received something from myself this week, and tonight is going to be no different. This morning, we had evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth Sr. with us, and he's joining us again for a round two. Now, this morning was powerful. If you tuned in, let me know in the comments. I'm going to, I have comments in front of me. Alicia, thank you for being here. She says she's the first one. David Solomon, that's two Bible names. Thanks for being here. He says, greetings. Mary Ellen, thank you for joining us from Arizona. Liz, Tierra, Monique, everyone that's joining us. Thank you guys for being here. Now, not only am I a host, but I'm also on staff for our Revival Today Bible Institute. That's the Bible school that we have here. And I've loved in getting to talk to our students and uh, 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 listen to how the week has been for them. And I have one of them here in studio right now. Come on set. I have with us Tessa, who's actually uh, also on um, an intern this week for the school. So I just want to hear from a Bible school student's point of view. What has this week been like for you? Give me 30 seconds. This week has been absolutely incredible. Um, I've gotten vision for my ministry in the future and I've never felt the presence of God like I did. Like last night, I literally was back there just on the floor, like the tears and snot that's back there is a lot. Like I just got touched and I was like, Lord, I don't care who sees or, or what, but I know that you're doing a work in me. And even this morning, like the Holy Spirit spoke about so many things that like I need to change or need to do for the future and things I need to stop caring about and things like that. And it's just been a life changing week for even going into second year thinking like, well, now I'm almost at the end. Like this first year went by so quick and thinking like this second year, I'm going to have to know exactly what I'm doing going out. So it's been incredible to get those next steps and just feel like so ready yeah. to go into my second year of school in just two months. It's powerful too. You're not the only one that's been crying because because I'm on staff, like I'm invested. I'm emotionally invested in what God's put in your heart. So I see them getting touched and prayed for and I'm also crying too because it's so powerful to see God touching people. But I'm receiving my touch as well even while watching you guys um, receive from the Lord this week. Thank you, Tessa. You guys give it up for Tessa in the comments. Show her some love. Like I said, don't, don't, don't check out just because it's night two, just because it's Saturday, I'm a little laid back. No, really receive from God. Even if it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, Make sure you are engaged. Make sure your spirit is on, on Make sure your faith is on, like Pastor Jonathan would say. Make sure your spirit is in a place to receive from God today. Don't be the hindrance to your own blessing. Can you do that for me tonight? Like I said, my name is Chi Chi. This is night six. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the finale of Revival Today International Camp Meeting.
myself completely uh, crippled. Um, four surgeries, trying to heal a detached retina. Like, I can't eat. At four years of this pain and throwing up. <laughs> in 2017, we had found out he had a tumor. They wanted to do an operation because they had 90% block or 80% blockage in my heart. And I didn't want them to do it because they tried killing me the first time. They tried doing that, putting in a stent. I, uh, I was born with muscular dystrophy, a rare form. There's 43 different forms. Um, and mitochondrial disease, which is a genetic defect in every cell of your body. But that man has not had a breath without assistance in over a decade. Blood disease, liver disease, kidney disease, any disease. They brought unto him all the sick. And no matter what their sickness or what their disease, he healed them all. He left here, took the oxygen off of his nose. I looked at her and said, I can see all those holes. Air tests, and they said, your respiratory function is above anything that we can imagine. It was the last day that I used a walker. Yes, I just believed it, and it happened. Just his words were so powerful. It just blew me. When you touched me, it felt like when they gave me the injection with the stuff to go through to see what the artery could block. It just all ran through, just hot as it could be. And he saw that the tumor was gone, completely gone. There's nothing there. The tumor looks like it's healed. The bone looks completely healed, like nothing was even there. There was no surgery that ever happened or anything on that bone. You've already won the victory. Hallelujah. Shout it out. I've already won. The Bible said, not just to, to ministry gifts, he said to all disciples, when you go and preach, heal all their sick. That the blood of Jesus has remitted my sins. We're living in the final hour of the last days. You don't have to finish how you started and you don't have to end up where you are right now. I would turn on the 24 hour broadcast and just stick it under my pillow at night. It was screaming faith and building faith in me. Uh, downloaded his app, Bible Today app, and I watched that whole week and learned more in that week than I had from anybody else in a long time. It touched me and this ministry has changed our life. I turned on Daystar on my husband's day off and we're watching and Jonathan came on. And when he came on, it ignited my spirit and my faith. That's why I'm setting my faith that these next five years, the fire of God will burn through this nation. From Boston, Massachusetts, to Maui, Hawaii, from Wasilla, Alaska, down to Laredo, Texas, the devil's not gonna have this generation. America shall be saved by the power of God. If you stand with me on that, give Jesus a hand clap, let the devil know that he has some opposition. to announce the launch of Revival Today Church. We're going to hold Holy Ghost Church services. Or a mass and social distancing, 10 minutes of no talking to I don't care how high the walls are, I don't care how tall the giants are, if the Lord is with me, it'll be as it said, the giants are meet for us, the walls will fall, we shall possess the land. We're going to have a place where you're free, and where you're free to experience the presence of God. I am standing here today looking at the men and women who are going to terrorize the devil before Jesus comes back. I'm looking at the men and women who are gonna rise up in the anointing and show that the God of breakthrough is not dead. He is alive and he knows my name. Get ready for the greatest year that you've ever had in Jesus' mighty name. In this church, we don't want some of the blessing. We want all of it. We want healing. We want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We want the gifts of the Spirit. And we want the wealth of the wicked that's laid up for the just.
No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it ever entered into the heart of man what God has reserved for those who love him. In Bible type love, hot, fiery love for God. The eyes of unbelief see nothing but difficulty and defeat. The eyes of faith, yeah, there are giants in the land, but they're unprotected. They're merely bred for us. If the Lord is with us, we'll go in and possess it at once. No matter where you go, God will surround you. The Lord will go before you. God will protect you. No harm and evil will come nigh to you. God will give you power over the devil and power over sin and power over your flesh. Tell the whole world over and over and over and over again that Jesus loves you with all his heart and he wants to save you and to save your life. You understand Jesus is coming and sooner than most of you people think he's coming. I'm not just saying that to get you excited. I'm telling you, he's coming. And let every devil be a liar. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord. He's able to give me a child. He's able to heal my body. He's able to provide for me. 2023 will be the year that the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ comes alive in the United States of America. I'm looking at the people right now that are going to make an impact. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you can do better. Hallelujah. Are you ready to worship God tonight? All right, we need all the praisers to make their way to the front and let's have a good time in praise tonight. Let's go.
you. No one beside you, I'll praise you. You are my help and my love. I'll praise you, Lord. The Redeemer of my soul. I'll praise you, Lord. My way maker, promise keeper, I'll praise you. You're everything that I need. Somebody just tell him how much you love him tonight. How much you need him tonight. Tell him I'll praise you, Lord. It's our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, lift it up tonight. Let's sing it together. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me how is our God. Oh, all we will all see how great, how great is our God. There's nobody like you, no one beside you. How great, how great is our God.
sing it. You don't need us. Go ahead and take it. How great. Come on. it one last time together. Come on, sing it out. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, see how great. How great is our God. How great lift your hands. Don't clap. Lift them up. Lift them up. And let's, let's open up your mouth. Come on. Go ahead and sing to the Lord in your own song. We bless you, Lord. Holy is your name. <laughs> worthy, 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 worthy. We praise you. Oh, oh, oh. that's the sound of Pentecost. Hey, sound of revival is in this room.
presence flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God.
anticipation. Come on, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. You're faithful to the end. Hey. Come on, we don't hear anybody in this place. Shout out to God. Hey. How many of us are believing God for a miracle today? Let's raise our hands. And let's sing this song in faith and in confidence that we believe is going to move. They say the mountain can't be moved. They say the chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. Oh, we've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your
Lord, I believe you said it, and it is done. If you believe that, just confess it. You said it, I believe it. Yes, I do. You said it, it is done. Your word has been tested and tried you said through ages and ages. I to generations and so we believe that if you did it before you can do it you said it and I believe with everything in me I don't know combined capabilities I know you're a big God if you said it you can do it I don't want to look at myself I don't want to look at the situation
this word Just lift up your hands and say generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children come on and sing that out may his favor, may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children children and the children may be upon you and a thousand generations in your family may his presence may his presence go before you and behind you and beside all around you 
Ask somebody around you, if God is for you, who can be against you? I said, if God is for you, who can be against you? Tell them so, nobody, 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 nobody. If God is for you.
What no eye is seven. Night way ain't seven. What no eye is seeing. Give Jesus a great big hand clap all over the auditorium. If you've had your life changed this week, give the Lord the biggest hand clap you've given anybody. Well, praise the Lord. Who's enjoyed the five star praise and worship twice daily? Mus musicians, stay up here with me. I want to ask. Where's the man from Canada that gave me that speeding ticket testimony? Are you here? Where is he? I'll have to tell it. Where? Where's he at? Not with me. Okay, check this out. A man from Canada told me he was driving here 35 miles over the speed limit on Interstate 79 down from Canada. How much? 50, okay, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. 55 miles an hour over the speed limit. Yeah, I don't know if he was in an F1 car or what. State trooper pulled him over and asked him very angrily, where are you going in such a hurry? He said, I'm going to, to church. He said, what church are you driving this fast to? He said, it's called Revival Today Church in Pittsburgh. The state trooper said, did you know that pastor's loaded? He's got a chrome Escalade. He said, that's a big church. He said, if you're going there, I'll let you off with just a warning. <laughs> yeah, not local. Everybody say, words getting out. Praise the Lord. Don't get offended that I have a Chrome Escalade. I won it in a poker game, so leave me alone. Who's ready to receive from the Lord tonight? Tomorrow is going to be the exclamation point on this eight-day extravaganza. I'm going to be preaching the Sunday morning service along with my wife, Adalis, and then, yeah, try to restrain the enthusiasm. And then Sunday night, uh, how many of you have ever heard of Evangelist Kofi? <laughs> Kofi's whole heart and soul is not only in this church, but he is... You know how Bishop Dag Haywood Mills said that Bonke told him he had that one man that was the secret to his ministry? God knitted Kofi and I together, and uh, that's how he is with me. He prays for me four hours a day. You know, I show up and preach. He preaches, plus does work from morning till late into the night, was running guests to and fro from the airport, saw Dr. Anichi off at two in the morning, uh, back to Nigeria, and has done that all week. I feel like tomorrow night will probably be the best meeting because you're going to hear from someone whose heart is the most invested in you of anybody that you've heard from. And that's not because the other people aren't invested. It's because Evangelist Kofi is a mighty man of God. And I thought it would be the best to have him put the exclamation point on the end of this. So I would not miss Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Um, I've heard people say that they, don't, they wish this wouldn't end. Well... We're not shutting the church down after tomorrow night. And so we had a first wave of people move here when we opened the church. And um, then we had about, in the late summer of last year, we had a second wave of people move. And I feel, from what people have been saying, there's going to be a third wave of people who relocate to Pittsburgh. So I'm not, no pressure. I would never want anybody to do anything out of the will of God. But if you felt God stirring you, because let's be honest, there's going to be a lot of people that when you go back home, you're going to last about three services and come back to Pittsburgh. Because you can't, you can't eat like this and go back to Denny's. Can you say amen? And that's not to insult other, but, but it, it's, it's people have sold out this kind of ministry. They're not interested in it. The thing that Paul and Nietzsche, Dr. Paul and Nietzsche said last night, that people have decided to minister to people's minds instead of their spirits is absolutely the truth. 
So if you, I, I will tell you that you get one go around in life. You don't have years to waste. And I would also encourage you not to make the mistake that a lot of parents have made, where they grew up in a move of God or around the Holy Ghost, but then the church they go to doesn't have it. The mom and dad know about it, but the kids never know about it. And the kids start making plans when they turn 14. I'm done with this. I want to get a part-time job when I turn 16, make sure I work on Sundays. This is my mom and dad's thing, and they never connect. What you got here is what flows in this church. His name is the Holy Spirit. We don't break them out for conventions and then put them back in a side room. The Holy Spirit is the one behind the building of this, of this great church. And we're 18 months in, and you see what, what God's doing, where we've now outgrown our, our second facility. We weren't sitting people outside for fun. We were at max legal, legal occupancy. And um, we have plans in place of what we're going to do in, in the short term, because I guess we're going to have to go, I don't know, 2,000, 2,500 seats, which places like that don't really exist. Like once you get over 1,500 or so, then it, it starts jumping to like six, 7,000. So uh, we're, we'll be there shortly. I don't know what else has, I'm not saying this to hype people up, I'm telling you, I don't know what else has to happen for people to see that we are in the final hour of the last days. All the negative stuff that you see in the Bible that's a sign of the last days is happening right before our eyes. All the po political things right before our eyes, all the technological things right before our eyes. But the good things that God promised as well, you're in it right now. And that word that, that evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth Sr. said that he saw in the Spirit that God was pouring out some kind of oil or honey or heavenly butter over Pittsburgh. That's what it feels like. I've caught myself sitting in the front row with just tears streaming down my face, just, and I, 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 it just, it, I am. Like, I'm not even thinking of anything. I'm just sitting in church, and the presence of God is so thick here. It reminds me of that church. Just stay on your feet a little longer. You'll be seated plenty. If you've ever heard me tell the story of how uh, when I was in Bible school, I heard there was a Brazilian church that came to Somerville, Massachusetts, and they were already at uh, 1,600 people in less than two years, which in Boston, it, anywhere is amazing. In Boston is extra amazing. They were in a warehouse, you know, kind of like what we've been doing, a rough building that they threw bleachers up because the growth was so quick. They would do their youth group 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. on Fridays, which I think is a great time to run your youth group. 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. on Fridays, you know, club time. And they'd have 700 teenagers average attendance. So I started attending there. I couldn't understand any, any Portuguese. But I could feel what I've been feeling in these meetings. It's not just the anointing from the preaching. It's there's a divine momentum because this whole thing is God's idea. This church started with, Jonathan, build me a strong church in this city. If he told me to build, build him a strong church in Valparaiso, Indiana, then I'd have relocated to Valparaiso, Indiana. I didn't, it's not because I live in Oakdale. Build me a strong church in this city. And then from the day I said yes to that, which was right then. I mean, it's just like I'm watching a movie. I don't feel like I'm doing anything. I'm sure Brother Kofi feels like he's doing something, and Sister Magalas and the musicians, but I don't feel like I'm, I'm doing anything. I'm just watching God, and then even with the musician, I mean, everybody's just doing what they're gifted to do with no restraints. Amen? So where this thing's going to go from here, I have such an excitement in my spirit, and I have an excitement for tonight. Tonight, every person is going to receive prayer from evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth Sr. I want you, I want you to give the warmest welcome you've ever given to anyone, to one of God's great servants. 50 years of gospel preaching. Please welcome to the platform for the second time at what no eye has seen 2023, evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth Sr. Make him feel welcome, everybody. God. I said, praise God. <laughs> Are you happy? I got attacked by a Jersey Mike sub, and I went to sleep today. I went and stared at the back of my eyelids. 
I don't know what it means, but as I'm getting older, I fall asleep in the afternoon now. I blame my wife. How you doing? When I walked in, the Lord showed me you have a call of God on your life. I don't know who you are, but you shall preach the gospel and be known for miracles that follow your ministry. You keep having some kind of dream or vision at night in your bedroom. And you see yourself standing on the platform. You see yourself preaching and walking with a mic in your hand. Isn't that right? You just see yourself doing these things. And it's going to get stronger and stronger. What's your name? Huh? Where are you from, Deacon? Michigan. You moved here last year. What part of Michigan? Ottawa County. Uh huh. Great part of our country. Go a little further north. Every duck in America lives in the water up there. Amen. I speak over you the increase of the anointing. Who's your parents? Are they here? Come here, parents. Quickly. Praise God. Here's one parent. Are you married? He might be in the parking lot. But he's coming. The Spirit of the Lord is upon this young man. God's hands on him. And he's entrusted his life to you and your wife. And he shall do great things for God. Is this your name here? Yes. Hallelujah. Bola bando ko shita bando raha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So you just moved here. But where you're at now is not where you're going to end up being here. You're going to get a nicer place than what you got. Amen. Have you shown him those brochures you've got? Have you shown him some of the things you're looking at? Your husband? Huh? Not yet. But you're smart. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you have it in your heart. This is what I'd like to have. I see it in the spirit, the lights up on the wall, some kind of arches on the building. Amen. It's pretty nice what I'm looking at. <laughs> have, you, have you seen them where she keeps them in the drawer? I don't know if it's a bedside table or a dining room area. But you go home, pull the drawers out, you'll find them where she's got them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psh, glory. Psh. Oh! Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Ankit's here. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes when the spirit starts moving, turn this mic up, please. I'm not a Baptist nor a Methodist. And I like loudness. There you go. I think Devin's half backslid some days. Amen. He started helping me with sound years ago in Atlanta. Every night I say, can you turn up any louder? Amen. We're out on a field. But folks, right now there's an anointing from heaven. Maybe that's why God had me rest today, because I'm going to lay hands on every single person in here in the name of Jesus. When I was a boy just south of here in Mount Morris, 
one Sunday after the service, I went up and stopped playing the piano. I don't like that kind of music. You know that song. Amen. Sounds like a babbling brook and a tinkling cymbal. Glory to God. I like upbeat music. Glory to God. I told you twice, I'm not Benny Hinn. <laughs> one time Benny and I held a meeting in Pennsylvania. And he was there all week and he kept telling everybody, shh, the spirit is a gentleman. The spirit is a gentleman. And then I come on Wednesday, I say, everybody get on your feet and shout. I'm tired of this deadness. Amen. <laughs> The, pe the people didn't know who to listen to. But it's just differences of flow, that's all, amen. But I went up in the field, and out of the sky, the Lord came down to me. I was seven. And he spoke to me, he said, I'm going to give you a gift, and you'll know what the people have need of. He told me some other things. I was only seven. And then he went right back up again. You can be seated. I might be ministering now and didn't know it. And um, I went down to the parsonage. And when I went in the parsonage, I said, Mom, I think the Lord spoke to me. And she said, be like little Samuel. Next time, say, here I am, Lord. I said, I don't want there to be a next time. That was time enough. And the years went by. And then I was down near here, Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania. And I was sitting in the service. I was trying to get close to this young Italian girl. I was putting my arm around her. When the speaker that was preaching said, there's some young man here, Jesus came to you as a boy. When he did that, I pulled my arm back off of her. <laughs> and then he described exactly what I had seen as a child. He said, I want everybody that wants God to use you, come to this altar. I went down. I left Italy, and I went straight to Pennsylvania. Amen. And as I was kneeling there, a vision opened up in the air like a TV screen. And I saw myself, I knew it was me, but I, I was older looking, and I was preaching. Now, seven was when the Lord came to me. That was when I was 14. And I saw myself preaching. And I knew I was called that night to start preaching. And so I started preaching when I was 14. I went back and sat down on the front row of that old tabernacle at the Assembly of God camp there at Cherry Tree. And when I did, an old man came up and sat down next to me. And he described to me what I'd just seen in that vision. You know, in the old days in Pentecost, there was more demonstrations of the Spirit than there are now. But that's all changing. And thank God that it is. It needs to change. And then he got up, went to walk back the aisle, and I, wanted to, I jumped up to ask him a question. I looked, and the aisle was empty, and the whole building was empty. He disappeared. I don't know. We'll see when we get to heaven. I think that was an angel. And then, when I was 21, I was in the island of Jamaica, and I was preaching, and I stopped because as I looked, I saw the crowd, about this size, maybe a little bigger. The men sitting on a block wall in a tree and on a bus stop on top of it across the street. In fact, I remember what it said on the side of the bus stop. It said, drink red stripe beer. And there was the vision. I stopped. At first, I thought, I've been here before. And then I realized this was the vision. Do you know what a wonderful feeling it is to know you've not missed the will of God even by an inch? You can be in the perfect will of God. Now, if you're a Baptist, then you've been taught that there are many wills of God. But I tell you, according to James, God's not double-minded. He doesn't have many wills. 
And so I remember even in Bible school, we had a teacher and the president of my Bible school class is here tonight, Pastor Henry Snyder and Sister Sherry Stan, please. I went to school with these folks, amen. And I told him the way things are looking, he looks better now as a president than ever before. But we had a teacher who was, you know, a little bit of a mixture. You got to be careful when you follow somebody that has a mixture. You either going to be all out for God or you're not. And there's no in between. Are you listening to me? And so they were teaching, and this is some, what some believe even now. There is the permissive will of God, perfect will of God, and they go through it. But there is no such thing as a permissive will because God doesn't have more than one will. And he says to you, don't you be double-minded, James 1. So if he told you not to be double-minded, why would he have two wills? You see what it means? No, what we call the permissive will of God we have to understand God allows what you allow. Whatever you allow in your life, it may not be God's perfect will, but he's not going to force you against your will. Choose this day whom you will serve. Are you listening to me? And so sometimes people have what I call culture. I'll talk to you about this. And the area of environment you've got to deal with that is opposed to the nature and the similitude or the very working of God in your life. You may have been raised one way, but God is transforming us into the right way. And some people don't believe the Bible, where the Bible says that we are to understand, and I want to take time with this before I minister to you, because this is, I believe, one of the biggest hindrances to receiving from the Lord. And that is people are double-minded. Because James said in the first chapter concerning double-mindedness, let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. And so you've got to have a focus and a single purpose and a singleness of mind. Are you listening to me? Sometimes I was around people, they say, well, if God don't heal me in the next 10 minutes, I'm taking the aspirin. You might as well go ahead and take it because you're already double-minded about it. It's not if, it's when. I said, it's not if, it's when. If is the badge of doubt. You're not sure about the will of God. But the Bible gives us God's will. Everybody say this, the word of God is the will of God revealed. Say it again. The Word of God is the will of God revealed. I've been in meetings, and the meeting's going along fine, and then maybe the speaker will say something, and you feel the anointing lift. You think, what was that about? Must be a devil. No. Sometimes we allow our spirits and our unregenerated minds that God is constantly renewing by the Holy Spirit to say things that the Spirit can't work with. The Holy Ghost only works with the Word. And the Spirit and the Word, they agree or work together. God will not anoint anything that's not His Word. And again, the Word of God is the revealed. Say it again. The Word of God. Excuse me a minute. I'm getting warm. I just want you to see I do, do have a suit. I've had it for some time. But it is not conducive to what I'm going to do tonight. My wife says, watch how many buttons you unbutton. Amen. All right. <laughs> How many are glad for my wife? She's so nice. She's so nice, I kissed her twice. Well, when it, it was that, a couple weeks ago. But anyhow, <laughs> the Word of God is the will of God revealed. So the Bible says 
teach sound doctrine, which means, number one, there is sound doctrine. Number two, it can be taught. And then again, John said in his writings in the 16th chapter, how be it when he, the Spirit of God, comes, he will lead and guide you into all truth. Does it say so? And so I've heard people say, nobody has all truth. I always answer them the same way. The devil is a liar. I believe the word, not somebody that was trained in their environment or culture to doubt God. Doubt comes from a worldly culture. Someone said to Smith Wigglesworth, what is worldliness? And Wigglesworth replied, when your affection for Christ cools, when you begin to get cool, your love for Jesus, you become worldly, and then he said you become carnal. I don't want to be worldly, and I don't want to be carnal. Are you listening to me? When you stay hot for the Lord, this anointing works everywhere you go. Now, there's an unusual manifestation that I've had, my wife can tell you, and that is if I walk into restaurants or places, if people are demon-possessed, they fall out of the booths and fall on the floor. Isn't that right, dear? That ha has happened for 40-some years or more. I believe it's one because of Christ in us that is manifested through us, and the devil knows who you are. Are you listening to me? We were in Canada. I was talking to some Canadians today. We went into Swiss Chalet, the best chicken I ever ate. Amen. And I walked in, and a man in a three-piece suit fell on the floor and started growling. And his elderly parents were looking for help. The waitress ran into the kitchen doorway there. So I saw she was crying. I went over. I said, it's all right. He'll be okay in a moment because I hadn't cast the devil out of him yet. She said, what is that? I said, that's a demon. When I said that, she turned and looked at me and went back into where they cooked. Amen. And I went over and I cast the devil out of him. He got up, brushed his clothes off. He said, I don't know what happened, and sat down. And I was able to talk to the mother, the father, and the son about Jesus because the anointing didn't just manifest that for just because God was showing off. God is with us wherever we go to deal with whatever the devil's trying to do to destroy humanity. Lift your hand and say, Lord, use me. Say, Lord, use me. And so I, I've had that. One time we were in Connecticut. I talked to a woman from Connecticut today. I don't know where you went, girl, but we went in, and it was that they made a movie there. It was called Mystic Pizza. And I, I had gone there when I was younger with my cousin Doug, and I said to Bonnie and our guy that travels with it, Donnie, I said, you're going to love this pizza. And so we went in there. And when we went in, it was hot summer day, and... Uh, the lady brought us water. I just drained mine right down. I was so hot. And she went away. And I said, Donnie, see if you get her attention. He said, she's ignoring me. How many have ever been in a restaurant where the waitresses or waiters ignore you? Amen. Make sure you wear cologne. Glory to God. But anyhow, I, uh, <laughs> I, was, I said, man. So I, I looked around. And I saw her. I said, Rebecca, come here. And she came over, and she said, how do you know my name? Do you know my brother? I said, no, I didn't even realize I had spoken her name. See? And her tag had a different name on it. And she would borrowed the tag from another waitress that went off duty, she told us. She said, I really want to know how you know who I am. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah. I said, here it goes. When I was a boy, Jesus appeared to me when I was seven. When I said that, the guy in the next booth jumped up, screamed bloody murder, and ran out of the pizza joint. And as I saw him running, he had tattoos. You remember this deer? He had the head of Satan on his shoulder and a bat tattooed on his neck. 
And so I said to Brother Donnie, I said, there's the illustration of a bat out of hell. There it goes. <laughs> and he, he wouldn't come back in. Say, because the anointing is in you and it abides in you, at any moment you are a potential danger to the kingdom of the devil. At any moment. We need to live for those moments. We need to look for those moments. We need to be ready to be used of God. Hallelujah. To sing, to preach, to pray. I mean, I've done all of it in restaurants. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. And so the older I get, the more I'm beginning to feel like we're living far below our privilege as God's children. There is nothing greater than the child of God anointed by the Holy Ghost. No president, no governor, no king, no queen, no potentate, nobody that has any position, no rich man, no billionaire, no millionaire, nobody has more power than you when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When Spurgeon preached, in London at the Metropolitan Tabernacle. He became so famous, they said, will you run for prime minister? Will you become prime minister? And he said, if God calls you to be a preacher, never stoop to become a king. In other words, he saw himself higher than the king of England because of the anointing of the word of God and the power of God. Oh, I feel it right now. Glory to God. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. I said Christ is in you, the hope of glory. He's constantly working. He's constantly moving. He's constantly promoting you. He's constantly helping you to get over in this life. Hallelujah. You, you don't have a worry. You don't have a care. You have divine providence. And if God be for you, then who's going to be against you? Oh, hallelujah. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. And a man's gift will make room for him and bring him or her before great man. The promotion of God has already established a seat at the table of this old world that when you sit down, you're the chairman of the board. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. And John said, I didn't forget where I was at. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. Not some truth, not part truth, all truth. Can you say amen? When someone says to you, nobody has all truth, what they're really saying is they don't believe the Spirit of the Lord can do His job. It's His job to lead us and guide us into the truth and the precepts and those things that God has established that we might have a life of victory and a great life of faith and overcoming. And so when I hear people say that, I always say the same thing. You need another dose of the Holy Ghost. If you're battling in your mind, you're double-minded, double-willed, and you blame it on God and say, well, it's God. It's either A, B, or C. None of the above. God's not running some kind of an essay with questions on it. He's already established his word. He's already settled it in heaven forever. He will honor his word above his name, and the word of God is the will of God revealed. I say and the is the revealed hallelujah you don't have to guess in fact the Lord teaches us Paul under the anointing said study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth brother Jesse said the other night if it can be rightly divided, it can be wrongly divided. 
And how many remember him saying that? I couldn't have said a louder amen for that good preaching. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now some people, you know them by the Spirit. You may have never met them before, but it's like you've known them your whole life. Isn't that right, Rodrigo? Stand on your feet. Praise the Lord. You young boys are getting it tonight. See, you had to come from Florida. Woo! Glory to God. Shikatan bon do ho. That was good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I see a lot of folks I know, and I appreciate you coming on a Saturday night. And I won't keep you late. I'll say what I got to say in about two hours, and then we'll get out of here. Amen. <laughs> Revive that lady that just passed out. Or maybe it was a devil. But anyhow. <clears throat> Some people, it's like you've known them your whole life. How many have ever had that experience? Feels good. Why? Our spirits bear witness, the Bible said, one with another. Now, my wife can tell you the number one complaint I get is people think I'm too stern. It's not that I'm stern. I like to laugh like the next guy. I know what I'm looking at in the mirror every morning, and I have a good laugh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Scared me one morning. I looked, it looked like my dad coming through the, the mirror. <laughs> no. There's a difference between authority and someone's just stern. A roughneck, you know, working on the pipes, fracking, so forth. No. Authority is given to you by God. The truth is, much ministry, I would say, over the last few years, many don't have a backbone. They're nothing more than glorified sissies. You don't believe it. Look at their manicured nails. The makeup on their eyelashes. I had a guy walk up. I looked him over. I thought, Lord, get me out of this place. If he's not something wrong with him, he's thinking about it. Amen. I'm going to let him think about it while I'm not here. The guy said to me, he, he thought he was going to get pull a word on me. How many of you ever had people come to you with a word you don't even know what they're talking about? Two summers ago, a dear soul came up, said, the Lord gave me a word for you. I said, what is it? You're going to drown. And said it with, <laughs> I looked him right in the eyes. I said, no, I'm not. And they were puzzled. You're not? I said, no. Why? I said, I know how to swim. And the rest of the summer, I got in every river, every lake, every pool. I even got in the bathtub. Hallelujah. You don't have to receive words from people if it doesn't bear witness with your spirit. When Brother Henry and Sister Sherry, my wife, and I were in Bible school, before I started dating my wife, a girl come up to me in the courtyard, and she said, the Lord told me. You're supposed to marry me. I looked at her. I said, if that's God, I'm going to become a Buddhist pygmy. Amen. I'm changing religions. I was just out of, you know, come up out of Virginia, coming to Bible school, and here was this whatever, saying God told her I was going to marry her. I found out years ago God doesn't have an unlisted phone number. You can call him up for yourself. Can you say amen? amen. Hello, Jesus. Dialing 911. <laughs> Jesus in the phone booth. Well, it come up out of my spirit. I said, when the Lord tells me, then I will come back and talk to you. And then I ran out of the courtyard with Marvin Keyes and the guys and went down and played basketball till supper. We come up from the basketball court, and there she is, and she's got Dave Carella backed against the wall of Gracemore. And I hear her voice coming over the courtyard. The Lord told me, you're supposed to marry me. 
Someone said, you must have felt bad. No, actually, I didn't. I was pretty happy. <clears throat> but David only been saved six weeks, and he and Don Moranville came down from New York to go to Bible school. David believed everybody was spiritual. He was the most naive Italian I ever met. I never saw a white boy run like he did. I yelled across the courtyard. I said, David, God didn't tell her anything. Get in here. And he come a running across the courtyard into the dorm, slid down against the wall, big, big, <laughs> big beads of sweat running off his bald head. He said, man, I didn't know, understand. I just got saved. God told me to come here, but he didn't tell me to marry her. I said, David, shh, shh, take a deep breath. Amen. I said, she's just wanting a man. Amen. You ain't a man. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? Not everybody that has a word for you is from God. You have to try the spirits to see whether or not it is God. And then again, the Bible says that we're led by the spirit, not by another man, not by a prophecy, not by a word somebody gives you. A word can only be a confirmation of something the precious Holy Spirit has already talk to you about are you listening to me we're not led by words we're not led by uh, prophets we're not led by prophetesses just because you prophesy doesn't mean you're a prophet or a prophetess uh, any more than having ice cream in your refrigerator makes you the dairy queen it don't work like that these gifts all operate by that self same spirit and they can be judged let the prophets that sit nearby judge are you hearing me and I tell you, God has some things he wants the church to know. He's raised up his prophets that are anointed by Jesus. They've been washed in the blood. Their minds have been renewed with the word. The power of the Holy Ghost is flowing through them. We've just come through a season of Facebook prophets and everybody's got a word. But I got news for you. The gift of prophecy is not gloom. It's not doom. It's not a warning. The gift of prophecy is exhortation, edification, and comfort. If that word doesn't leave you comfortable, then it's not the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? It's edification. Oh, hallelujah. It builds you up. It's like a battery cable on a battery. Suddenly you're getting charged up. That's what a good testimony is. I was on my way to church. I was sinning, driving 55 miles an hour over the speed limit but God overlooked my sin and sent an officer that believes in God hallelujah I said hallelujah that's a good testimony glory exhortation part of the gift of prophecy is faith I don't remember his last name, but there was a prophet in 2020 prophesying the end of the world. I think his name was Jerry or Jeremiah. He said, oh. then later he said he went to a meeting and someone cast the devil out of it. And I knew people by the thousands went all over the nation to hear him prophesy. You were listening to a lying spirit in the mouth of a man. That shows you the level of understanding in the body of Christ. <laughs> Getting quiet now. Let's sing. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. Brother Shuttlesworth might be right. Ooh. See, people have to have that ability. Now, someone said, I, I have discernment. There is no such thing. But there is discerning of spirits. What they really have is what I call concernment. They get concerned. But all the gifts work at that moment. Discerning of spirits has four levels, according to the first chapter of John. It's the only place where the Greek word or do is used for seeing. And all of the revelation gifts help you to see like God. First, they saw Christ. They knew it was Jesus. First part of discerning spirits, you discern the spirit of Christ. Then, a man comes and stands in front of Jesus. He said, here's a man in whom is no guile. He's all right. 
He said, how do you know me? Then the word of knowledge kicked in. Jesus said, I saw you when you were under the tree. So by discerning his spirits, he discerned the spirit of a man. That's the second part of discerning his spirits. The disciples said, man, this is something else. Jesus said, you think this is something? The day will come. That's word of wisdom. Goes up into the future. The day will come when you'll see heaven open up and angels ascending and descending. One translation said, falling from heaven. That's two elements. Angels, the spirit of angels, and then the fallen, Revelation, chapter 10, the angels which fell, one-third of the stars of heaven. That's demons or demonic powers. So discerning the spirits has a fourfold operation. You discern Christ first. Then you're blessed to help men. Then you have angelic assistance. And lastly, power over devils. For Jesus said, behold, I give you power over all the works of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Are you listening to me? Thank the Lord for that. I said, thank the Lord for that. Now, the Lord instructed me. This is Saturday night. The Lord instructed me Monday night to tell you of a vision I had in Texas last year. And so I pray about it because I don't want to just tell a story to tell a story. But in January of 2022, I was in Rollett, Texas. And it was a Thursday night. And as I was preaching, suddenly to my right, a tall, dark, fearsome, evil-looking creature stood up out of the congregation, but it almost touched the ceiling of the church. I saw it. And when I saw it, I heard these words. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask the Lord, was that audible? Or was it in my spirit? But I heard him. This is the strong man that has stood over America. When I heard those words, a bright shaft of light came out of the ceiling of that church. Church in the city, I think it's called. And came down and hit the head of that creature. And it burned the creature up right down into the ground. But now my eyes, all I see is a mist. I've lost the sight of the people. And I was carried by the Spirit across the top of the church. And when I came out of it, I was standing on the other side of the altar with my finger like this. And I saw these bright, flashing lights. But before I tell you that, let me tell you the rest of what I saw before I got caught up. When the creature got burned down, behind him stood the U.S. Capitol building. And a second word came from the Lord. The strong man that was over America was burned and destroyed tonight by my power. Tell the people, tonight, I have taken America out of the hands of the devil. And now I hold the authority over America. That was January 2022. Are you listening to me? Carried by the Spirit. Now I'm on the other side of the auditorium. The people are coming back in focus. And I see these bright lights flashing. And my inside, I feel like I'm exploding. This isn't something I, I can count on one hand in 50 years when I've had something like this. It doesn't happen all the time. But when it does, it's powerful by God. 
Glory to God. Don't ever forget God's on your side to help you. God's working on your behalf. Some of you, you're too caught up in politics. Are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Are you a Plutocrat? Are you Mickey Mouse? I don't care what you are. I tell you, my Savior is my elder brother. His name is Jesus. I've been campaigning for him for 47, 48 years, telling everybody he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. There's none like unto him. Who is this that cometh out of Edom with dried <laughs> garments, dyed garments from Basra, glorious in his apparel? His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He walks with strength. He talks with power. The devils fear him. The day will come when every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, hallelujah. I prophesy life. I prophesy healing. I prophesy deliverance. I tell you everything is turning around for your good. I saw these bright flashing lights like a camera that dollies in or zooms in. I saw it was a sign, lighted sign, and it said, Las Vegas. So I'm like this. I see it. My wife sees I'm experiencing something. She knows me better than anybody. She better. <laughs> and I said what I heard the Lord say. In the city where people think I'm least likely to move, I am going to bring a mighty revival to Las Vegas. And then the crowd then was back in focus. Afterwards, Dale, a pastor friend of mine that I knew for years, comes up. He said, you were pointing to my children. And in the morning, they have plane tickets to fly to Las Vegas. And they're going there to start a church. I didn't know that. But God has a word for everybody in here. Because if he'll bless Las Vegas, he'll bless where you live. If God will bless Las Vegas, he'll bless Pittsburgh. He is no respecter of persons. Yeah, there may be an order of operation. Let everything be done decently and in order. But that doesn't mean that God's given up on you or God's given up on your family or God's given up on your children. I come to tell you tonight, there is a word from heaven. And the word is the devil can't have America. God knocked him out of the batter's box last year in January. I don't care what you hear, what you see. It's God now that is removed move the strong man and then the Lord has shown me this year by regions the devils will be cast out now that the strong man is pulled down region by region by region I the Lord thy God shall deliver thee and there is none like unto me oh hallelujah this he hope so these are the days of revival these are the days of the Holy Ghost the devil doesn't get to write the last chapter of your life or your history. The devil doesn't get to decide your future or your destiny. But our lives are hid with Christ in God. Oh, hallelujah. So every time those lies come out of the White House, I laugh. Ha! We're running out of beef. I go out and buy every steak I can buy and eat it until I sweat. June. The banks, they're going under in June. I open new accounts, grab more money, did my thing. I don't believe a lying devil for what it's worth to you and you shouldn't either always do the opposite of what the devil says if the devil says it's over you're just starting out and it's a new beginning if the devil tells you you're not going to make it you ought to shout and shout i'm going to make it hallelujah i said i'm going <laughs> Woo! glory 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 i said you're going to make it 
I said, you're going to make it. What the devil planned against you, God has undone the plan. He took it and unwrapped it and handed you a package. And in that package is a successful future. You're going to make it. When the Spirit of the Lord came in the middle of the congregation upon Jehaziel, oh hallelujah, he said the battle is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and tell your neighbor, you're going to make it. And if you're bold, tell them, I'm already making it. I dare you to shout. I dare you to praise God. Yeah, Lord, 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 Lord. I said yes, Lord, Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. We're almost there, brother. Possess thy soul with patience. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. See, I learned years ago, I don't need music to get anointed. But I sure like it. Shh, glory. Hallelujah. When I say don't play nothing, I mean don't play nothing. Because sometimes the musicians go one way, I'm going this way. How many of you are going the right way? And I love these musicians. In fact, the keyboard player, this organ, some of the greatest. Whew. I got to hold on to something. I see things in the spirit. Be seated a minute. Amen. I'm not done. When I said about how they wanted the banks to close in June, I just heard the Lord tell me something. Pray in the Holy Ghost so I can get this clear. Ora bando riande kita ha. Mando rabasi anda ha. Ha ta pa shuko ninda ha. Now, I see it, yeah. All right. In January last year, they were talking about extending the masks and the lockdowns. Isn't that right? For another year. And who knows, they got to this year, probably kept going. But when the strong man's power was broken, they couldn't do what they wanted. Which means some leaders were getting their strength from demons. Demon powers had invaded our nation. But one move of the Holy Ghost undoes every plan of the devil. If you'll remember in Time Magazine, your papers, they start talking about the Great Reset. That's what I do to my scales upstairs in the bathroom. I lower them when I get on. Then I know my wife's coming in, I jack them up about five pounds. And I hear in there, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's the great reset of the Weight Watchers scale. <laughs> you knew I was doing that, right? You didn't? You didn't know I was? She said, you better not. Because she goes on some kind of a who knows what. I couldn't eat what she eats. Bless her heart. She looks better now than when we got married. And she's pretty good looking when we got married. First thing I was attracted to was her legs. 
She had a brown birthmark on one of them. And I didn't know, and I said, excuse me, ma'am, you got mud on your leg. She said, that's a birthmark. I said, sorry about that. Hallelujah. But I got a free look. Glory to God. <laughs> I was in the Bible school library. You better believe for a woman, brother, lest people think about you a different way. Glory to God. It's better to be married than not. Now, see, I just got laughing inside. Amen. Especially at about five men that just slid down in their chairs. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me again this year and last year and said, if you'll teach the people how to give an offering of faith, it will undo the great reset. Now, if you're like me, I started thinking, what's an offering of faith? Every time I give, I'm using my faith. The Lord said, no, you're not. And so I began to pray that out. One time I was fasting and praying, and we'd seen a lot of people healed of deafness, but not too many blind folk. So I locked myself in that room off our bedroom. I said, honey, I'm going to fast until the Lord gives me an anointing for the blind. Like the man I prayed for this morning that was lost some vision in his eye from the stroke. Well, I'm praying and I hear in my spirit, which is greater? souls or money I said Lord you know I think souls are and I actually felt bad I thought God was saying I was mercenary or something I didn't have a chrome Cadillac I had nothing in those days <laughs> I wanted one and then I smelled hamburgers cooking and my wife was cooking downstairs and the smell of the hamburger was coming up through the floorboards into my prayer closet. I said, Lord, I'm going to catch you tomorrow. I come down. My wife said, I thought you were fasting. I said, cook me a hamburger. Extra onions. Extra, extra onions. Cover it with mayonnaise. Ketchup, mustard. For you that didn't eat, you'll love this part of the message. Put it on a bun. And I put it into the ministry. So the next day I started again. God didn't let me off. You're not going to no ignore the voice of the Spirit talking to you. God's not going to let you off the hook. Because the last place you obey God is the last place He'll bless you. But the last place you disobey God will be the last place He'll bless you. The blessing is contingent upon doing what God tells you to do. Are you listening to me? So now I'm back and I hear it again. Which is greater, souls or money? I said it out loud. I'm in my closet. Nobody can hear me but the carpet. <laughs> souls are. And I kept praying. And I was in longer this time. I don't know how long. I, I quit telling people because then they think if they fast that many days, then they'll get some. So just I went for a while. And towards the end of the fast, I hear a third time. Which is greater, souls or money? I said, Lord, I told you souls are. And he told me, if you don't have faith for the lesser, which is money, how are you going to have faith for the greater, which are souls? And I changed my whole thinking about money on that fast. I went believing God for the blind, but I came out understanding in God's economy, you've got a priority to put the lost of this world, 
the least of this world and sometimes the last of this world are more important to God on his calendar than how much money you got or the size of your bank account. But if you want blessing and increase and prosperity, you begin to go after souls. And Oral Roberts told me one day, he said, never forget, he gives wages to the reapers. You want to have money? Go reap the harvest. You want to have the blessing? Go after the lost. You want to have more than you got now? Go after souls. Are you hearing me? That's the best advice a preacher ever gave me. And so our focus is the lost. Our focus is America. We're saying it's not what uh, party's in the White House, not who's in the Congress, but it's who is in our heart. His name is Jesus. He is able to deliver thee. I said he is able to deliver thee. When the Hebrew children were warned by their government, if you don't bow down to what we say, worship the statue, you're going to burn. But the Hebrew children said, be it known unto thee, O king, that if we bow down, we will burn, but we're not going to bow down. Therefore, we will not burn. Hallelujah. For the Lord who is our God is a delivering God. And he cast the men to the fiery furnace. And when they were cast in, the Bible says suddenly with the heat of the flames, there was a fourth man who walked in the flame. Hallelujah. And their hosen was not burned. Their clothes were not burned. It's better to serve God. For Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 We're almost there. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're almost there. Glory. Hallelujah. Now see, if God can use me, a squirrel hunter from West Virginia, he can use you, Rodrigo. He can use every man and woman in here. It's not where you come from, it's where you're headed. Glory. After that vision in Texas, my next meeting was in Atlanta. And a young man that worked at the CDC, a Christian, spirit-filled fellow, worked in the head office for the head lady. He asked to meet me, Brother Houghton, Bishop from Detroit. And he told us, he said, I'm going into hiding. He said, I know the real numbers. He said, the H1N1 was worse than this. But when they saw the fear of the people, they took advantage to control the nation. He said, I got everything on this little whatever they call that. He said, they just gave the head of the CDC, a drug company, I won't mention them, 26 million to consider staying shut when they vote in March. The preachers around that table, we all looked at each other. Now see, I already knew, I believe it was a real attack, I believe it was a real virus, but because of God's people, it didn't do what they thought it would do. Jesus already told us in the last days, there'd be plagues. But if you're still here, you got power over plagues. He even told Adam, you got power over everything that creeps on the earth. Everybody say, I have power over creeps. You just got power. I never forget Brother Huffman. He goes, Wow, they've lied to us. But I have a nephew, he was on target, he knew it was a lie. Amen. He got death threats. Why? Because he want to tell people the truth. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. No more chains of misery. The truth, the truth will triumph. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. No more chains of slavery. The truth will triumph with your, make it your personal, 
liberty. He whom the Son sets free, whoa, whoa, is free indeed. Whew. I sing that and I feel pretty good. That's better than a Jersey Mike sub. It woke me up. The sub put me to sleep. And so, I'm going to tell you something tonight by the Holy Ghost before I lay hands on you. How many are believing for a financial miracle or breakthrough or increase? In any way, lift your hand to Jesus. And as your hand is lifted to him, just begin to tell the Lord exactly what it is. Confess it. This is what I'm believing for. This girl, she's so wealthy, she don't have to lift her hand. So if you need money, you come see that woman right there. Amen. Because she's loaded. But I got my hand up. Hallelujah. Because I need some money. I need something to do what I do. I need a financial breakthrough. Come on, talk to the Lord about it for a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Breakthrough. Someone say breakthrough. You that have studied economics know that there is no $34 trillion debt. Half of it, it's the government owes to itself. So divide by two. Then, when they changed the GDP to the GNP, that only accounts for the income for the national product. It used to be domestic, national, but national is every corporation in the world that's an American corporation. If you just tax them at the lowest rate of 25%, the national debt would be paid off in 10 months. All of this is done by these think tank brains that like to ally themselves with Satan, steal your blessing, kill your family. Are you listening to me? I'll never, and I never did, I kept traveling. I ain't locking down for a demon spirit. I'm not shutting down for Satan. Are you hearing me? But see, the problem was you had a lot of weak-spirited people in the church that let their faith get too low, and you forgot you have power over the devil and power over all his works. But it's time to take a stand and say enough is enough. I'm not going to let the devil steal my children. He's not going to steal my children's future. He's not going to steal my life. He's not going to rewrite my destiny. My life is hid with Christ in God. The devil doesn't get to write the last chapter of my life, but my life is the book of Acts in action, and the Holy Ghost is writing a good story about you every day. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I've been washed in the blood. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues, and the devil's under my feet. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Raise your hands and shout hallelujah. Sister, you just praise diabetes out of your body. I saw that when it happened. Hey! Hey! What are you going to praise God for? What's on its way out of here? Hey! Hallelujah! She just gave me the safe sign. Go ahead and slide in, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now that means you're going to keep the healing. 
You ought to thank him. Hallelujah. One down, 900 to go. Excuse me, 798 to go. They told me they're sending people in here to count the crowd. When I heard that, you know what I prayed? I said, Lord, everybody comes on this ground. I don't care if they're from the mayor's office trying to jam up the preacher. As soon as they step on the ground, let the Holy Ghost come on them. I claim their soul for heaven and God. Put a hook in their jaw. Bring them to the bleeding side of Calvary. Let the blood come over them. So if you're here trying to gather information, it's too late. You already stepped on holy ground. You're destined for the kingdom. God has anointed this place for his glory. Raise your hands and shout, yeah. Shout, yeah. Shout yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Clap your hands and rejoice. Everybody look this way. Be seated. We're going to break every financial attack off of you by the power of the resurrected Christ tonight shout tonight so I asked the Lord what is an offering of faith here's what he told me you ready for this he said tell the people when they give what they think they cannot afford to give, that's an offering of faith. But if they give what they know they can give, there's no faith in it because they know they can do it. Then I started praying in speed tongues quietly. Don't ask me to give one, Lord. Amen. You know what he did? This was last year. He said, I want you to give an offering of faith. You've got to lead it. And my wife and I lost our ever-loving natural minds and began to give offering of faith, then provision. Another offering of faith, provision. When I needed money the most, God said, don't take the check from so-and-so. Okay, Lord. And I didn't do it. And somehow... When she did the first quarter report last year than the first quarter this year, we had more money come in to preach the gospel on television, under the tent, crusades, publish literature than we've ever had in 47 years. That's the truth. You see, if I'm going to teach it, i got to live by it myself. An offering of faith. Guess what? The Holy Ghost is here to challenge you to give an offering of faith. And this is what the Lord told me. Believe it, receive it, or don't. He said, when the people will obey it, I'll put a hedge around about their money so that the thief cannot break in and steal. Secondly, he said, if the people will do it, the spirit of increase, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, God will multiply what you have. Thirdly, he said, they'll have more than enough to give to every good work. That's all scripture, but he told me that. And for the first time, I saw in the spirit what my dear friend, Brother Roberts, told me years ago. If you're involved in winning souls, whether it's your family, your children, or with the ministry here, God is going to multiply what you have. If you believe it, lift your hand to heaven and say, I receive it. Just like it's coming down out of heaven, for it is. For I have given you the word of the Lord tonight. The strong man is broken. 
And now the strong man that I see is Jesus himself. And he's saying, no matter what weapon is formed against you, it shall not prosper. Are you listening to me? Lift your hand again. Say, I receive that prosperity from God. No weapon. That's the one prosperity we need to preach more about. Hallelujah. The prosperity of the word that says no weapon shall come against you. The world's prosperity can't take away your prosperity. And the world's plan cannot destroy God's plan. Because the world's plan is based on greed and fear. But God's plan is based on seed time and harvest. It's based on the faith of God himself. I'm going to be stronger, better, more power than I've ever had after this service tonight. Because the kingdom of God's based on increase. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn on the ear. I'm leaving with a greater anointing. If you are too, lift both your hands and praise him while the musicians come back. Come on, praise him. Open up your mouth. Like my nephew, I say this is one of the best singing groups, musicians. On that organ, brother, key of C. Hmm. If I say, oh, it is Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus in my soul. Well, for I have touched the hem of of his garment. garment. Raise your hand and sing it. And And his blood blood has has made. made Sing in the key of C, sister. Oh, it is Jesus. Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Yes, it is Jesus. In my soul. Sing it, girls. For I have touched the hem of his God and his blood and his blood has well made me whole. Well, oh, it is Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus in my soul. Well, for I have touched the hem of his God and his blood. And his blood has well made me whole. First verse. I tried and I tried to come to Jesus. I pressed through the crowd and touched him that day. Virtue flowed out of Jesus and touched me. Now I am. Every bit whole. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. Well, for I have touched the blood and his blood well may me me hold one more time oh it is Jesus well wonderful Jesus well yes it is Jesus in my soul wherefore I have touched your hand and sing it and his blood has made me whole one more time oh it is come 
on, pick it up. Wonderful Jesus. Well, yes, it is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his heart. Camila, his blood. His blood. Claim it for Holy Ghost preachers. All three of them. Four of them. one more moment that's the power of God anytime you sing about the blood devils leave I always tell my son sing blood songs because I go into neighborhoods where they're dealing drugs shooting each other prostitution they come under the tent walk in front of the platform like they're strutting their stuff and I'll go Jesus and they'll fall right on the grass. God will lay them out like no man ever laid them out. So I may seem a little different, but I've spent most of my life in the cities preaching under a tent or on fields. So I've been uh, trained by the Holy Ghost. I fish where the fish are. Some people spend all that money for evangelism and then go kick their leg over the tub in their house and get the pole out, whether it's an Orvis rod or Shakespeare, and fish in their own tub. Not me. The only thing in that tub is a ring because my wife hasn't gotten to it yet. But look out when she comes. She's got sprays. She's got stuff. Sometimes I help her, because I make the ring. <laughs> Hear me. I'm going to teach you something now that if you'll do it, you'll never be broke another day in your life. I have that from Scripture. I was in Baltimore on Sipple Avenue preaching, and a little widow woman come up to me, and she said, the Lord told me to give you my Social Security check. I said, I ain't taking it. I ain't taking a woman's entire month's money. She said, you got to. I said, no, I don't. Pastor Campbell come up behind me, handed me a plate. He said, receive the woman's offering. I felt like, don't tell me you're crooked too. I wasn't doing it. He stuck the plate in my hand. He said, Brother Shuttlesworth, the Bible says men that die that live here received the tithe. I didn't know if he was threatening to kill me or what. I wasn't dead. I took the offering. She hugged me. She's happy. I'm not happy. I handed him back the plate and her check. Listen, the next night, this big guy comes in, big old buckle, big man. He said, where's the man that took my mother's Social Security check? I was going to point to Brother Campbell, but he was a little fella. I said, I received the offering. He stuck his big old hand out and said, I want to thank you. And she come up behind him. I see she's smiling, so I knew I wasn't going to get beat. He said, I haven't been with my mother for five years, but she prays for me. He said, I don't know what it was, but this morning the Lord told me, go find your mama. When he got there, on the door of her apartment was a dispossessed notice. How many know what I'm talking about? where the sheriff nails it to the door, you're getting thrown out. She hadn't paid her rent for 90 days, three months. He said, when I saw it, I ripped it off and went down to the sheriff's office. He said, what's this doing on my mother's door? He didn't even go in and say hello to her. They told him, and he was a truck driver, he pulled out a big wad of money and paid the 90 day past due money to the sheriff. Then he looked at the address of the landlord, went back to the same building, knocked on the door, 
He said, I just paid my mama's rent off, and now I'm going to give you money for six months ahead. He wasn't even saved. But that's his mama. And he said, I want to thank God for the preacher that obeyed the Lord. He said, because I believe it was God that brought me back to my mama. And she stuck her head around him because he's big. She said, I know it was the Lord. Thank you, Brother Shuttlesworth. And from that day, September 1979 to this day, I never apologize when I receive an offering because I realize your blessing is on the other side of your obedience. Everybody say, my blessing is on the other side of my obedience. People say, what are you going to do with my money? I said, pay some of my bills off because I'm constantly preaching the gospel. And I don't intend to stop until Jesus comes to get me or I go to get him. Amen. Everybody say an offering of faith. Now, if you'll obey this tonight, that threefold promise will work. Number one, it's when you give God something you don't think you can afford to give tonight. If you know you can do it, no faith in it. You know you can do it. That's, that's your natural man making the decision. So I want every head bowed. I'm going to pray the Lord will help you to take this step of faith with me and my wife. Because a lot of people are wanting me to stop traveling, but I'm not doing it. I'm going, someone said, are you going to retire? Yes, I put four new ones on that car out there. And her car, two of the tires had dry rot. I just put four new ones on her. I retired my wife with me. And we're still running for the Lord. And we're not stopping. Look at these children receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bow your head. Father, I pray you'd speak to the people. It's going to be large. It's going to be bigger than what they normally would give. It's going to take faith. But you're the one who told me an offering of faith. And I never had done it. I didn't know what it meant. But since that time, I've done this. Wherever you tell me to do it, at least one night in our meetings, I'm challenging your people. And you told me you would undo the great reset over these people's jobs, homes, food, finances. We're not buying the blessing. We're obeying the blesser. And now it's up to you to put food on the table. It's up to you to put clothes on our back. It's up to you to take care of us. We fully trust God. Now, for a moment, just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. What would be an offering of faith for you tonight? Precious Spirit of God, talk to us. Hallelujah. While you're praying, ushers, get on your feet. Everyone that needs an envelope to obey God tonight, lift your hand. The, uh, the ushers are in the aisle. These are great ushers. They move quickly. We've been having some wonderful meetings. If you want to give online, they'll put some information up on the screen. I call it an offering of faith. This young fellow, the Lord touched tonight, he wants an envelope. The other night, my little grandson pulled a $100 bill out of his pocket. I didn't even have a $100 bill. I still don't have one. I said, look at that. My grandson's given a hundred. Hallelujah. And then, even though he's seven, he said, Grandfather, if you'll give, God will bless you too. He's out of the will. Amen. <laughs> an offering of faith. Everybody say an offering of faith. There was an, a lady from Canada that my mother used to love, Doris Akers. And she wrote a song. You can be God-giving no matter how hard you try for just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high the more you give the more he gives to you so keep on giving because it's really true you can be God giving no matter how hard you didn't think I'd hit that note, did you? You try. Everybody say you 
can be God given no matter how hard you try for just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high oh the more you give the more he gives to you so keep on giving because it's really true you can be god giving no matter how hard you try why don't you try him tonight say you can be god giving no matter how hard you try for just as sure as you are living and the lord he's in heaven on high well the more you give the more he gives to you so abraham keep on giving keep on giving because it's really true oh you can't be God giving no matter how hard how many are going to take the challenge tonight and give God an offering of faith may I see your hand when you're ready to give stand on your feet we're going to do this in front of God his holy angels and the world we're not backing down the strong man has been pulled down the Holy Ghost is on the move Hallelujah. Oh, just as sure as you are living. And the Lord is in heaven. Lift your hand like this. Say, in heaven, in heaven, on high. I can hear my mama sing. She's still alive, 91. For just as sure as you are living. And the Lord is in heaven on high the more i give make it personal the more he gives to me so i'm gonna keep on giving god will make me debt free sorry sister acres i had to put it in there you can be god giving Ooh no matter how hard Oh, 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 you try. You try. Why don't you try him tonight? I want all the ushers to line up on the line there, that white line, all across. Now, the way this works, people bring an offering, but they don't take anything out. We're not a bank. That's all the ushers you've got. I need some more buckets. I'm expecting big stuff to happen to you tonight. Can any of you play soccer? All right. He does. Wonderful. Now everybody lift your offering to heaven or your cell phone or however you're given. Make this confession out loud. Say, Father, I believe that this ministry shall be debt free. Brother Ted's ministry shall be debt free. My house shall be debt free. Go ahead, Lord. You see my heart. Build that wall of protection around me, my family, in this last hour. You got to cause ravens to bring me a Big Mac. Come on, birds, start flying. I receive it in Jesus' name. My clothes won't wear out. My shoes won't wear out. I'll have more than enough. I shall prosper, increase, multiply by the power of the anointing 
of the Spirit of God because of what you did, Jesus, on the cross. As they start singing and playing, come on, bring God an offering. If you gave by your phone, come down and touch the bucket. But everybody do what God told you.
would say brother shuttlesworth there's not one sin between me and god i know i'm ready and the bible says these things were written that you may know you have life eternal let me see your hand say there's not one sin between me and the holy god keep it up so i can look the crowd over not one sin Keep it up. I'm still looking. I'm going row by row because this is eternity. I don't want to see anybody go to hell, Brother Wolf. Because first and primarily, I'm an evangelist. You don't have your hand up. You're not saved, girl. I said, are you saved? Now get your hand up. You wasted my time. She's worried about her wallet. She lost it. Whoever got her wallet, give it back to her. It's just what I thought. I'm in a believer's meeting tonight. It was too easy to preach. But that's all right. I'll be under the tent in Buffalo shortly. You ain't got your hand up. You saved? Are you saved? No, you're not saved, are you? See, the Lord had me walk all the way back for you. You got to live right. That's the challenge for you tonight because you're a very nice lady. I can see that. I know you want to make it. She said, I believe in God. Well, if you believe in God, then you believe his word. And his word declares there's certain things you can't do and be saved. And see, you've been raised enough with the knowledge of God that even though you're doing a couple of things, I see it now in the Spirit. I just had to wait. Look at that. God sent me back just for you. That's how important you are. This might be the greatest altar call I ever give. One soul. One soul, Jesus said, is worth more than the combined wealth of the world. For what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world but lose his own soul. The devil attacked you in relationships. It ticked you off, to use my son's phrase. If God's so good, how come I had all this mess? Right? Yeah. Then people lied about you concerning your character and your conduct. Yeah. You said, if that's God, I ain't going to that church. You go to this church? Where are you from? Well, I command you to come to this church now. They don't talk to people like that. There's good people here. Are you her daughter? 
Are you her son? Yeah. Who are you? Her daughter. Her daughter. Yes, sir. Got it. Uh, didn't my didn't my mom that's her sister. Oh. And, and that's my cousin and my cousin. Thank God you know who you are. I'm done with you, son. Be quiet. I'm going after your mama's soul. Now that I know you've got three little souls, you're responsible for four? That's your daughter? She's, you look too young to have a girl that big. God bless you. Tomorrow's your birthday? Happy birthday. Jesus has come with a present. First of all, the Bible said whoever you forgive their sins, man says you're forgiven, it shall be done for them. And then Jesus honors it because he shed his blood for you. I don't know what it was, the lying or the mistreatment. You were wounded in the house of God. This night the Lord heals that. Isn't that right? Take my hand. You and I are going to go take a walk. It's all right. My wife knows I do this. Amen. <laughs> Devil, you can't have her soul. She's got four children. She got her raised right. She's got others that are looking to her. I thank you for this woman. Tomorrow is her birthday. I pray at this old-fashioned altar, you would give her what she has need of. Pota bazungo da baha. Oh, God gave you a gift when you were younger. I just see it. If you needed to sing, you could sing. If you need to do some other things, you have a gift. But you said, I ain't using it if people are going to be that way. Yeah. Oh, the devil lost another one. Because if you're that strong against those unkind, mean people, you'll be just as strong for a loving caring Jesus and I just heard the Lord say take her down to the altar I won't put you in front of a speaker because your hair will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye let's make this an altar right here go ahead and kneel and don't get up till you know everything's right between you and Christ everybody lift your hand for this lovely beautiful woman that needs Christ hallelujah Jesus, I claim every soul for heaven and God under here. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus, I receive Christ as my helper, Savior, healer. Give me some women to come with her. I got men. I don't need men. I want women. Here comes Sister Adalas, the pastor here. Now say this, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood cleanse me and little sister you say this Lord I'm coming back I'm the comeback kid and the Lord is going to give me victory I'm getting back from this setback in Jesus name Lord put only a holy relationship around her now provide for her and her children Jesus name sister say this Lord I believe just say it out loud Lord I believe tonight is my night you raised Jesus up for me I turn my eyes off of people now, I'm looking at you Jesus you had the evangelist walk through the sports arena to me I'm important to God and his plan of salvation Therefore, from this day forward, I will live for Jesus Christ. 
Now, pastor is going to pray with you. And this other lady, she's weeping, but the tears of joy. Lift your hands. A soul. One soul. How many believe you're going to receive tonight? I'm going to finish by laying my hands on everybody. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'll start over here, this section. Everybody that wants prayer, turn and move towards the wall. You want hands laid on you. No, no, sir. Not all the way down there. Just move against the wall. Because I'm going to bring them across to me. I ain't coming to them. They're coming to me tonight. But just line up in one big group against the wall. Ushers, listen to what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. You in this section, you want hands laid on you, move to this aisle, go towards the back, and come behind them folks. Do it right now, please. I finally got a place big enough I can do what I want when it comes to praying for people. I've been to some places so small, we had to go outside. One time I went out and these guys were playing basketball. They just got in the line. They didn't know what it was. I laid hands on all 10 of them. And they got slain in the spirit, and they weren't even in the service. Come on, move quick. Bunch it up. Don't line up. Just make a big bunch. That's where you're missing it, ushers. I don't want a line yet. Just bunch the people up. Because it takes a while to move a thousand souls. I was in Tobago at Shaw Park, and I laid hands on 3,000 people. I was there till one in the morning. I went home. I fell in bed with my suit on. I was soaking wet. And the Lord said, the next time, here's what you do. And from that time to this, I found out an easier way to pray for big crowds. You that are in this section, wonderful people, go to this aisle and go all the way to the back and bunch up behind that crowd forming if you want hands laid on you. Stay up here, Anka. Bring me that white chair, sir. Put on top of that speaker. If I break it, I'll buy a new one. You all did good. Tomorrow is shouting day. May someone buy you a chicken sandwich. May the singers fast. May the keyboard fellas, someone buy you a steak. The drummer, he needs two steaks for his hands and feet. My granddaughter said, this feels like a tent meeting. And she's right. I recognize these. Did Brad Strobel bring this equipment? You that are patient, these folks are slow, but it's okay. We're in no hurry. We got till uh, Jesus comes. You that are in this section, move towards that wall and bunch up around them. Brother John, look at this. The crowd goes all the way around the horseshoe. That's amazing. Uncle, come up here. Brother John, different ones that are going to help me. I didn't ask you to do anything yet. Just hold off. I got to get the ushers in order. Kofi, I need one usher here. Someone falls into this stuff. One right here by the left. And across from him, somebody. Then this nice looking fellow with a red shirt. When I start, make sure the people start moving. And don't stop and talk, because I, I, I can't hear you anyhow. It sounds so good. <laughs> Everybody lift your right hand. I'm going to prophesy a blessing. Lord, underneath my hand, let your nail-scarred hand come. When hands are laid upon your children, drive out every sickness, every disease, every devil. 
has to go. Where's my wife at? I need some women. A dollar's my wife. Because we got women we pray for. Honey, stand here. Brother Ankit, move down a little bit. Just don't let him fall. I want you to stand here. The next you will be my nephew, if he will, John. Now you, Brother John, Brother Ankit, I probably laid hands. I, I did an estimate the other day with my calendar books and everything. I probably laid hands on over one million people or more. Probably more. In almost 50 years of doing this. The more I do it, the anointing that is residual stays in me. And there's going to be a stronger anointing on you when you pray. If we can get down low enough, God will exalt Jesus. The way to go up in God's kingdom is to go down. The way to have is to give away. I didn't ask the Lord to appear to me. He chose to do that. My choice was to obey what I saw and heard. Now, all these years later, God's birthing a Holy Ghost revival church. But more than that, families will be blessed. Now, when you come, make sure your hands are raised. I have so many scars from women's fingernails on my arms that I look like I've been in a war. When I looked down, I had blood all over my shirt. Some lady, I think she had razor blades in her nails. Don't stop and talk to me. Just receive the blessing. The gift of faith works in ministering by the laying on of hands. For those, for example, that received the Holy Ghost, when Peter and John went down to Samaria, they received by the laying on of hands. Paul in Ephesus, those that he laid hands on, received and prophesied. The blessing, Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, it's released by the laying on of hands. Let's lift both hands for a minute. I feel it getting stronger. The Bible says we wait on the anointing to minister. Preachers, don't get in a rush. Don't get in a rush. Where's my preacher buddy, Henry Snyder, and his wife, Sherry? Come over here, Brother Henry, you and Sister Sherry. He has a great church up in New Hampshire. If you're watching online, Google Henry Snyder. Where's that, Conway or near Freiburg? Come over here. Stand next to Bonnie, Sister Sherry. Sister Dallas, here. We love all these people. Now lift your right hand again. Say, Father, when I come through this line, I will receive my miracle, my breakthrough. Tonight, Satan, take your hands off. I'm loosed to be a blessing. An organ player, no slow songs. Put the pedal to the metal. Play the fastest songs you know. If the singers try to sing and slow it down, play over them. But singers, I know you can keep up. Take a deep breath, because we're all going to work now for Jesus. <laughs> Ushers, right across, shoulder to shoulder. There you go. Especially watch when the people come over the hump. Come on, bring them right down this way. <laughs> <laughs>